Catherine Catherine Okipinki uh, is uh, our next uh, guest. Uh, she is uh, uh, not only a medical doctor, but uh, uh, a, 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 an advocate of uh, Italian language and of a kind of revolutionary way of approaching the Italian language. And uh, I'm glad to have her back here again. Uh, uh, Catherine Okipi. Thank you. Uh, yeah, about. So anyway, um, what I noticed from the first half uh, was that the speakers here seem to have one thing in common, and that is that their upbringing as Italians in this country had a lot to do with their development as writers. That is the same thing for me. Um, I'm third generation, and in my case, you know, we had the traditions with the food, we had the Sunday <coughs> dinner, we went to church. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood that was Italian, Irish, uh, Jewish, some German, um, in New York. <coughs> and so we all had our ethnic groups and we all had our traditions. But what I found was that the one thing that was missing for my life was the language. And I, I firmly believe that really to know a culture, you do need to learn their language. You do need to know how they think and how they feel about things. And that is all really expressed um, through their language, um, as much as you know, through the food and the, the other traditions. So, um, so I grew up and in this household. I took a little bit of Italian in high school, took a little bit of Italian in college, and then, as Dominic mentioned, I went off to medical school and really had to focus on that. Um, and then eventually, I ended up in Peoria for um, a job. And I started raising my family, and I wanted them to know really what it is to be Italian. And I went back to the idea of language and learning the language. And I have no less than, I would say, 20 textbooks trying to teach myself Italian, and so you know, I had some schooling. And I found when I went to Italy, I didn't know simple things like you know, how to ask to take a taxi, how to make reservations at the hotel. And the reason is that you know, the schools really don't focus on these things. And then when I came back, a friend of mine in Peoria wanted to start a class for the Italian American Society there. And so we did, because now the focus is, you know, before the focus was, language was really not important because we want to be American. But now the focus is, it's so important to know where you come from. It's so important to know your relatives and to know your town and to know if that is a part of who you are. So uh, it was really wonderful for me because I brought back my interest in language. So I kind of um, did things in a unique way. I ended up, with, I was looking for things on the internet and I uh, didn't really quite find everything I wanted. So I wrote my own material. I thought, oh, how hard did it be? Right? <laughs> so, like any writer, I was an English major in college, too. So, of course, 18 chapters and four and a half years later, I had a textbook. And every time we would do a chapter, we would also go over it. You know, in our, it was an informal meetup group. You know, you could call it a class. It was really very informal. We had food, it was Italian. Um, I would go over it and I would see how it went over and um, revise it. So it was kind of a unique way to write a book. So I didn't write it as, oh, here I'm a scholar, I'm fluent in Italian, this is what people need to know. I kind of went to people and said, you know, what do you need to know? And I did it that way. And then I realized no one's going to want to buy a 450 page textbook. So I took sections out and I made smaller reference books, um, which I like because I'm a very visual learner, so I made some really nice clear tables so people can find the tables. And of course, I have explanations. And I tried to get everything on one page. Because another thing I didn't like about textbooks, especially language books, they try and cram it all in. So you've got some of the information here, and then it ends here, and then they start a new topic there. Um, so that's what I did. And um, I self published. And um, I'm happy I did, except although I would say uh, a publisher would have told me this is not a good um, cover because my title is very small and it doesn't look good on the thumbnails. 
when you put it up on Amazon. Um, if you look at every other Italian book, it says Italian in big block letters. But anyway, I'm hoping people will recognize the picture and recognize my little series from there. Okay, so then I did all that, and then I uh, decided from being in some language groups here, people were saying, okay, well, you know this stuff, but can you talk about yourself? And, you know, honestly, I really, I really couldn't talk about myself very well. So I said, you know what, this is important, too. Um, we're all adults. We need to be able to talk about what we're doing. And so as I'm continuing to learn Italian, um, I have these blogs. So again, the same idea. Um, as I'm learning, I put up what I'm learning. And so I just wanted to show you my blogs a little bit. Um, so this has been a very popular blog, and I'm continuing with this all year, um, Everyday Phrases. Um, so I noticed when I started to learn Italian, and you know what I would tell people too is, you have to interact with the language, watch a movie, listen to music, um, play the same segment of the movie over and over. You know, after you've enjoyed it, um, just keep watching it. Try and, even if you just pick out a few words, that's you know you'll remember that movie. Oh, this is where I learned that word. But then I realized to become fluent, we can't be thinking, okay, let's put one word here and one word there, and you know. You have to speak, right? We all speak fluently, we speak pretty quickly. I mean, I can conjugate any verb you want in my head, okay? I know the ARE verbs, the ERE verbs, all right? Well, but when I try to speak, those verbs just have to come out. I can't sit and think about it. So what I realized was is when we learn languages, um, we start remembering phrases. So, mi ha detto, someone said to me, he said to me, mi ha detto. We use it a lot. Um, so I'm putting out phrases that I have found uh, occur over and over, so high-frequency phrases, um, on this blog. So this is a blog for people who want to learn simple Italian. Um, and it's called Conversational Italian. And I'm also putting up uh, phrases. Uh, I'm also putting up cultural things about holidays in Italy. Festa della Donna. And I've learned quite a bit from this blog too because I've researched it um, online uh, for what I write. And these are very short blogs. Um, food, if anyone wants to know how I cook, there we go. Proverbs, I try to put up every Friday. Um, but these blogs are very short, so if we go into one, we can view it. Because another thing I know is, you know, so this is how it so so these are so these are very simple. The Italian is in blue. It's another thing is everything is color coded and so I like that. And just very this is how to use a very bisogno di another important phrase, I need whatever you need. Um, and then just a few example phrases. Uh, and another thing I do with this blog is I have a Facebook group called Conversational Italian. And I'll put up Opus on your D. And I'll ask people, how do you use that? Can you come up with some sentences for that? And then I'll use those sentences in the blog. So I make learning the language interactive that way. But also, it's important to know how the words are used. Um, and so people who use this to make up a sentence, and I'll think, OK, this is probably not really Italian. But I don't want to correct them, so I'll say, any Italians in the Facebook group, is this how we would really use this word? And they'll come back and say, no, we won't really use it this way. Instead, we would say, you know, something else. Again, making it interactive for people. Um, and then, for people who really know Italian, what I'm trying to do now, so basically on that blog, conversational Italian is really the things that I already know, high frequency phrases that I've come up with. But this blog is on my website, learntravelitalian.com, where again, we have recipes and cultural notes about Italy. But if you go up here to our blog, and this is more um, to sell my books. There we go. Um, I have longer um, 
longer blogs. And these blogs are basically what I'm learning now. So to speak Italian all about me. So when my friend said, you know, you're really not very good at talking about yourself in Italian, I thought, well, I'm going to learn how to talk about myself in Italian. And um, so maybe everyone else can learn from this. And so here is basically what I need to know to talk about myself. And then, at the, and then I put in the middle part of the blog what verbs you need to know. It's actually very complicated to talk about yourself, right? You need to know your present tense, but how about your family? Well, that can be in the past tense, where your family is from, past tense. Um, so then I put the verbs that we need to know, the conjugations, and then in the end, um, I put a fill in the blank. So people can print it off and write their own history of what they need to know. And one thing I'm focusing on now is this adjunctive mode, and I've been told, oh, you know, it's a good excuse not to learn it. Well, Italians really don't use this adjunctive mode anymore, but actually it's very important. And, uh, you know, now that we're emailing, just to say to someone, I hope you're feeling well. You do, yeah. you do, right? Yeah, it's not true. It's very important. But it, again, for an adult to learn Italian, it's important in certain situations. So I try and put out the situations that might come up, like I have the emails where the subjunctive would come up, if you're wishing someone well and how they're doing. So this is kind of what I've been doing lately. And um, I hope people, if they're interested, they can come to my blog. All this is free. If they really are interested, um, my textbook. I, you know, I think covers all of the basics. You, you have a good working knowledge of beginning Italian. And um, thank you, Dominic, for allowing me to come and present everything I've been doing. And uh, I really enjoy it. I hope everyone um, will take a look and maybe you'll enjoy it too. Thank you. Sure. So the, the web address is learntravelitalian.com. And from that, you can get to my blogs, and you can um, you can get to pretty much everything from that. You can get to my Facebook page. Um, I have the icon there. And on Facebook, the group is just called Conversational Italian with an exclamation point. We have four, 414 members. It's really fun. And um, I, I sometimes I wonder are people really reading it. And then I slip up and I make a mistake and boy, someone's no. right there. <laughs> 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 I, I say thank you for, you know, keeping me straight. And if I ask a question, do any Italians in the group, because we have Italians from Italy in the group, you know, do, is this right or is this wrong? They'll, they'll be right there. So I, I would say I've been really impressed. Um, and um, it's a really nice group. And then the, um, the blog that goes with that one is just the same thing, conversational Italian. Dot WordPress dot com because it's a, a WordPress blog. Okay. Thanks, My hand is off to you, Kathy. Thanks. Thank you. Get into competition with the publishers of Italian language books who change the edition every couple of years mm -hmm. just so if you have to pay. Un, un, ungodly amounts uh, to buy the new book uh, and uh, engaging with uh, Italian speakers. I think most of the Italian teachers were trained by Mussolini <laughs> and to consider a language as an authoritarian uh, 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 tool. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, my hat is off to you for trying to uh, break down the, the barrier and uh, learn it in a practical way, um, which I still haven't done after 30-some trips to Italy. Uh, adesso, uh,